Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to a series of videos in which I'm reading you a book. We are reading St. Matthew, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, and we are up to chapter 8. Now, our last few chapters have all been the same, and they have been static in one way, utterly fascinating in another way, but static in one way. They've all been Jesus' teaching. They've just been an uninterrupted monologue of Jesus' teaching. All sorts of things, thought-provoking things, contradict, seemingly contradictory things, very interesting things. Uh, but all that, without any interp interposition of any kind of human drama at all, now that changes. When we get to chapter 8, Jesus comes back down from the mountain. Uh, when he came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, for right away we're back to the same problem, which is that you can't get rid of these crowds. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, shew thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for testimony unto them. So this, we saw this before in Mark. This is the same story of Jesus healing someone and then warning him not to tell anybody. And when Jesus had, was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at, at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so it be done to thee. And, thy servant, and his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid of, sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she rose and ministered unto them. <laughs> she thought she was getting a break from the housework, but no. <laughs> uh, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. A little bit strange here, in a way. I mean, you, it's, it's wonderful. We're back to wonder working. But you notice in the story of the centurion that Jesus doesn't even need to be anywhere near the person to heal them. He certainly doesn't need to touch them. It's kind of weird how that, that varies back and forth. Now, when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side, meaning the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, and a certain scribe came to him and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. But the dead don't bury things. They're dead. They can't do anything. It's It's tough. If you're, if you're a believing Christian, it's tough to look at this verse and say you're supposed to leave your parents' dead body to rot in the sidewalk. It's, it's almost nece necessary that you gloss this somehow. Uh, and when he had, was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Where were all these great... Uh, rafter shattering storms are coming from the Sea of Galilee. I've been there many times. I, anyway, uh, and he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Ah, it, we've seen this scene before, and you know, the, the disciples have already seen Jesus do re remarkable things, so it's kind of amazing that they would be so amazed. But I want to point out, they're afraid because they think the storm is going to swamp their ship and drown them all. Like most fishermen, they don't swim. <laughs> so that's why they're afraid. It, 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 
Jesus, whether they've seen Jesus do miracles or not, they haven't seen him command the weather before, hence their astonishment when he does. So they have absolutely no reason to think that this is no big deal. The storm is coming is no big deal. They have absolutely, it is totally irrational on Jesus's part. They have no reason not to be frightened. Um, but anyway, let's, let's just move on here. And when he was come to the other side into the country of, of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed by devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And, the, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them, and they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen of the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. There's, I think a little bit of drama there in the wording of the line, because you're expecting that the crowd is going to come out and thank Jesus, but instead they come out and ask him to leave. And it's pretty easy to see why. Uh, I, I will leave out here for the minute my usual carping about how vicious this is, how vicious this story is. The pigs are people. They are enjoying themselves. They are feasting. They are, they are grazing on a fine day at the seaside. And then suddenly they are, they are, they are possessed by demons and flown to their death. Uh, but I, will leave, I, won't, I won't harp on that to excess. I will instead say that I think, I think it's pretty easy to see why the people of the town asked Jesus to leave. Because how do they know? <laughs> how do they know what caused the destruction of these pigs or somebody's livelihood? They don't know anything that's going on here. All they know is that this guy is too powerful to be safe to be around. So they ask him to leave. <laughs> and, that, and that ends our chapter. So this chapter, we have gone right back to uh, to normal, to normal elements. Three normal elements in particular. One, the wonder working has returned. Two, the crowds have returned. And three, the dumb disciples have returned. <laughs> so we're right back to elements that were very familiar in Mark. And we'll just see, we'll see if that continues. We're going to move on next time. So I will wrap this up here and I will see you then. Thank you, Booktube.